From being the top rated show on the History Channel gaining 3 million viewers per episode, to facing several controversies throughout the show's existence, the truth about Pawn Stars stretches further than their quote unquote reality setup. The guys from the world famous gold and silver pawn shop have not only seen success over their 20 plus seasons, but have also faced several serious scandals, along with their dedicated public questioning the so-called reality of their reality show. Today I learned that History Channel's Pawn Stars had a fake pawn shop set built exclusively to film the show in. Because of the show's huge popularity, it became virtually impossible to film inside of the real store. With comments under that post stating, The real shop is tiny too. The whole show after maybe the first few episodes was scripted entirely, and you could tell when Rick really knew about something and didn't have the info fed to him by his reactions. One time when I was in Vegas, I took the deuce bus from the strip to the downtown area and made a stop right outside of their pawn shop. And I was absolutely stunned when like half of the bus got up to get off there. And I looked outside and there were people lined up outside to even walk in the place. All to get a look at some rundown pawn shop. Seriously, the building looked like a dump. I even used to like the show, but could not fathom waiting in line to maybe get a peek at those celebrities. Trust me, I get it. Reality shows may not be the reality we so desire, but I feel like it's getting out of hand with these programs being entirely scripted from head to toe. Though Pawn Stars has a dedicated fan base, trust me, I used to watch the fuck out of them. Some of these air quote celebrities have become famous for other more realistic reasons. And it's with these crazy allegations and blatant staging of the show that left my palate curious. Curious into documenting the reality of Pawn Stars. Here's a quick overview of the guys with many friends. The Gold and Silver Pawn Shop was an actual pawn shop that opened in the late 80s. According to the Las Vegas Weekly, Rick Harrison had sought a pawn license for most of the 1980s and had been maddened by a long established ordinance that no pawn license would be issued in the city of Las Vegas until its population exceeded 250,000. Rick Harrison called the city each week for more than two years to check on the official Las Vegas population count. When the figure finally crept higher than 250,000, he pounced, and Gold and Silver opened for business in 1989. Before first airing on July 19, 2009, Pawn Stars was first pitched to HBO, that ultimately went nowhere, had a spot on a PBS documentary, and even appeared on Insomniac with Dave Attell in 2003. Rick, how am I looking? Yeah, you're looking bad. That's an antique watch. What would you give me for that? No. Nothing? Nothing. Pawnbroker with a heart is a pawnbroker out of business. They would eventually be picked up by the History Channel that marked their journey into Hollywood stardom. Pawn Stars would show the daily antics of Rick Harrison, his son Corey, the man who calls himself Chum Lee, and of course the old man. The show was well received and though they'd have a few skits here and there, the information about their items blended well with other History Channel shows. They'd have no problem becoming the top rated show on the network and took the number two spot on reality shows at one point, right behind the Jersey Shore legends. With their massive viewer numbers, it seemed like every Las Vegas tourist wanted to catch a glimpse of the Pawn Stars. The Huffington Post would write an article in 2012 sharing 13 things we didn't know about the Pawn Stars stating, the guys can't actually work the counter anymore because of privacy laws. Since they've become celebrities, People are constantly taking pictures of them, compromising the privacy of whoever's at the pawn counter. Now I'll meet a guy in the hallway, said Corey. It's no doubt that the men had to change up their lifestyle as they became a little bit more than just local celebrities. And quickly after the inception of their program, Pawn Stars became more reality TV than actual reality.
It's no secret that reality shows are doctored to make the program look more interesting, but it's especially shitty when tourists visit the shop and are met with disappointed outcomes. For example, the show is actually filmed on a different set which is built inside the actual store. The fans wanting to catch a glimpse of the Honest Pawn Store owners rarely see the members of the cast in the store, and they don't actually take part in any of the pawn shop business. From what we understand, the shop makes far more from the show and sightseers than it does from the actual pawn business. The replicated pawn store, down to the guys not actually being there for the tourists, also sparked questions about the customers as a whole. According to Scott Robin of Vital Las Vegas, some visitors do get to interact with the cast, but they're unpaid extras, pulled from the shop floor to take part in production. Extras are instructed to act naturally including not looking at the stars during taping. We may as well also share that the haggling on the show isn't real either. Prices are finalized before filming begins, so the back and forth and trademark what are you looking to get out of it is straight up entertainment. In an article written for Looper, writers Carmen Rebecca and Brian Rubin wrote, it should come as no surprise that the items you see brought into the gold and silver pawn shop on the show have been vetted beforehand. Another shop employee Rocco Landy said, once an item is deemed possible TV material, its seller is coached on how to act while on camera. Some people have a great item to sell, but they appear nervous on film. It can take several tries to get it right, depending on the person. Now, it's pretty obvious that the day-to-day -day life of a pawn shop owner may be probably some of the most boring stuff in the history of boring. Unless, of course, you're part of Hardcore Pawn. But the fact that virtually everything is staged in Pawn Stars is straight-up pitiful. I mean, check out this guy selling his Pokemon card who Chum Lee seems to pretty much know everything about. Though the person selling the card goes by the name of Charlie Hurlocker, who is an actual senior consultant for CGC Trading Cards and is an expert in Pokemon trading cards. So who employs the buddy Chum Lee calls to examine the card? You guessed it, CGC Trading Cards. Though some of their experts have also faced some pretty nasty allegations from their toy guy. A man best known as the toy expert on Pawn Stars is facing a domestic violence charge following an incident outside a restaurant last month. According to TMZ, surveillance video shows Johnny Jimenez and his girlfriend in an argument when he pulled her purse strap, causing her to fall. When police arrived, Jimenez told them that he was trying to get her inside the restaurant to eat because she was drunk down to their signature guy. Steve Grad is principal authenticator at Beckett Authentication and a regular face on the hit history channel show Pawn Stars. It's nice to see him removed from the show. We get that out of here. And you know what? I think it helps the sales of everybody else because that bad stuff, it's cheaper price. It'll drag down the authentic stuff. The actual reality of some of its cast members may be even more sinister than we thought. March of 2016 would find Austin Lee Russell, better known as Chum Lee, in a bit of hot water after police searched his home on a warrant stemming from a sex assault case. No charges were filed in connection with that case and Russell has been cleared. During the search of his home, police found a dozen weapons, ranging from registered handguns to a shotgun and unregistered assault-style rifles, plus a gallon bag of the devil's lettuce anxiety medication, and a small amount of what Walter White would call an inferior product in his home. Chum would take a plea deal that would keep him out of jail and on probation for three years, along with court-ordered counseling that would result in the court dismissing his felony charge, and his record would be left with only a misdemeanor. Rick would also be sued by his own mother, Joanne Harrison, claiming she had been cut out of companies, trusts, and a safe full of cash and silver with the lawsuit alleging her stake in the businesses has been reduced without her consent, and payments to her have shrunk in some cases and completely ended in others. Among the allegations in the lawsuit, Joanne Harrison claims she was forced to sign over her 51% interest in the pawn shop in 2000 or 2001, when Joanne was in a coma in the hospital. Rick's mother would file a restraining order against her son with Rick telling the Las Vegas Review Journal, the allegations are false and I think that my 81-year-old mother is being manipulated by others for their personal gain. Corey himself has also felt negative publicity after an incident in 2014. According to Nikki Swift, Corey Harrison exposed himself and urinated in a bar. 
Corey Harrison treated the aptly named Spectators Bar to a performance they'll likely never forget during a Booze Field Jefferson City Night Out in 2014. Perhaps inspired by Missouri's Show Me State nickname, after downing copious amounts of shots, Harrison proceeded to expose himself then publicly urinate. He got his pants down, peeing on a bar stool, being very proud of it. However, the show wasn't over yet. After posing for fan photos with his pants down, Harrison picked up a bar stool and threw it, resulting in him getting tossed out of the premises. So what does this mean exactly? Well, it means what you want it to mean. Personally, I still watch Pawn Stars, but more as background noise while I eat my In-N-Out burger. The show seems to be going strong despite the countless articles, blogs, and videos discussing the many controversies, along with discussing how real the show might be. It's crazy that the shop went from having 70 people come in a day to blowing up to about a thousand a day with tourists just wanting to see the shop and willing to pay money to do it. Though it's a nice show to hear while I munch down on my potato chips. The fact that these men would go out of their way to blatantly stage most aspects of their reality program shows the audience the true and devious nature of the Pawn Stars. <laughs>